So, what does discrete mean? Individual, separate, and distinct. I'll use a different colour pen, but John's got a pretty good example. Individually, what do you say? Separate? And distinct. And distinct. Very good. Anything different? Not continuous. So it can't be any number. I like to think it was the same thing. Individually um, stepped data. The data that has individual steps or levels or clear jumps between. Provide three. I was going to say, sorry. Well, wherever in Europe. Wherever in Europe. Discrete. To south of Greece. This. Discrete. <laughs> Geography oh. jokes. Geography jokes. <laughs> That's only a nice one. So there's a little island called Crete or Crete. It's Crete. It's Crete. It's Crete. I cannot confirm or deny, but I keep that map there for that joke. So, this is this, this group, okay. Anyway, be here all year. Um, provide three examples of discrete data. Yeah, good countries, great example. That would be a categorical discrete data, not the greatest example. I don't really want categorical. Give me some numerical discrete data. Oh, rolling of dice, very good. What else? Flipping a coin. Any counting, literally anything you count. Marbles. Marbles. Can you have, well you can have half a marble, but you get what I'm saying. You can't count half a marble, you can't count half a person. You're either a full person, or you're two full people, or you're three full people, or you're four full people, you get the idea, correct? <laughs> Shoe size, is that, cat is that discrete or continuous? Yeah, that is still low. Does it level and step? Yeah. Shoe size is a example of discrete data. Is foot length an example of discrete data? Because of centimeters. Foot length? One centimeter. Yeah, but you can always zoom in, can't you? Millimeters. And then you can zoom in more. So if I asked you to measure your foot, you would actually not be able to tell me the exact measurement of your foot. Because you'd always get more precise, correct? Whereas you can always tell me your shoe size is exactly 10.5 or exactly 10 or exactly 9. Does that make sense? So even though it's 10.5, it's still discrete data because it's going you know, 6, 6.5, 7, 7.5, 8, 8.5. See how we put that level? So discrete data is what we're going to be focusing on here. Continuous data we sort of do with more in year 12. What probability do we, do we assign to something that is impossible? Zero. Zero. So an example of something that's impossible, like Harrison beating Robin in chess? Uh, uh, what, what a joke. Just, just facts. Yeah. Um, all three of Cameron, Ruby and Chelsea wearing form uniform on any given day. <laughs> Uh, Proven so again today. Oh, school's training. Oh, school's training. Oh, that's good. Okay, good. Um, and what about the probability of Melissa not mentioning Taylor Swift within a lesson? All three of those things are probability zero. What's that, David? No, I'm pretty sure you're the one who already mentioned her. Do I? Yeah. Okay. A wise philosopher. A wise philosopher once said, "Hey, it's me on the problem you see." <laughs> if you're offering, okay, so what, what probability do we assign to it a Methodist certain? One. Okay, for example, Harrison saying footy in a class is quite never stepping on a football field. <laughs> Just 
<laughs> a rocky touch can say, in rocky we do this. Is there a me making the student body laugh with top level humour? All of those things. That's impossible. Look, if, it was, if it's on the board, it's obviously true. All right, I couldn't put up non-factual events on the board. What we're going to look at is some of the characteristics of probability. We've got a pretty good idea. We're going to specifically focus on these tables here. So that's an introduction. What we're going to look at is the flipping of a, I should have the flipping of a, a rolling of a dice here. So this is rolling dice. And the score that we see on the dice is denoted by X. And we're looking for the probability that that occurs. So I want you to fill out that table using fractions with what you think. Now it's a fair dice. We're rolling a fair dice. What do we know about the probability of each of those events? Just one dice. Just a singular dice. It's like a die. Yep, like that. Very good. So the odds of getting a one are one in six. The odds of getting a two? Three? Four? Five? And six. What should all of these probabilities sum to? One, six. Six. Six over six. One. Six over six. They should equal one, correct? Very good. Now, a lot of the time we're going to... Oh, what else should I never see these probabilities? If the lowest value, the impossible event is equal to zero, I will never see a negative probability. Sweet. So sometimes they will ask you to determine whether this is or is not a probability density, a probability distribution. There are two ways you or two things you need to check. Number one, you need to check that all the probabilities add up to equal. One, and you need to check that all the probabilities are greater than zero. And if those two things are taking place and you've got a probability, you've got a discrete probability um, distribution. So here, sometimes we're asked to make our own distributions, like we have made our own there, but sometimes we're asked to make a little bit more complex ones, like to determine if I'm flipping three coins, give me the probability density of achieving zero, one, two, or three heads in that situation. On your bikes, get set, go. I'll give you one minute to fill that table out. I'll give you the, is X the number of dice? X is the number of heads. Yep. Oh, no. Yeah, one coin. Flipping one coin three times. So this is the first flip, this is the second, and this is the third. That's how I personally do it. Forty seconds. How many total outcomes are there? How many of those outcomes involve three heads? One. How many of those outcomes involve no heads? One. Interesting.
ignore the tree diagram below. That's just how I figured it out. That's what you need. If you had this, you're in a good spot. I'll just give you the tree diagram to help you figure that out. Sweet. So I can ask you what's the probability of getting two heads? Zero heads. Very good. Let's see what the how it works. There are some more calculations we can do with that, but for now, I just want us to build our familiarity with these tables because they do come up a bit and they can be quite tricky to get your head around the first time.